gobsmacked, speechless, overawed. Each of these words refers to a physiological response we have in the face of overwhelm, especially in the face of unspeakable tragedy. In bearing witness to horror, we are often left without words. Today, due to our ability to immediately react to this feeling, the moment of speechlessness has shortened. We see something that brings us outrage and reach for immediate catharsis by venting that outrage online or by finding an explanation for the horror through cable or internet news sources. In finding an immediate outlet, we have lost the skill of silence, one that Aaron practices in this week's Torah portion. Aaron's sons, Nadav and Abihu, are said to have brought strange fire before God, which leads to God killing them. In response to their sudden death at God's hands, Moses, Aaron's younger brother, says to Aaron, this is what God meant when God said, I will make my holiness known through those near to me and will gain glory throughout the people. Aaron responded with silence. Unspeakable tragedy. One can only imagine Aaron blaming himself for bringing his sons into the role that led to their death or for not preparing them properly. And Moses, perhaps he was trying to console Aaron, trying to tell him that the tragic deaths were for a greater purpose. Moses learned or mislearned this approach from God directly. According to Midrash, when Moses ascended to receive the Torah at Sinai, he found God elaborating the calligraphy of the letters. Moses asked, Master of the universe, why are you delaying? God responded, Rabbi Akiva ben Yosef is destined to interpret heaps and heaps of wisdom in each and every of my elaborations. Moses, shocked, demanded, Master of the world, show him to me. Moses was suddenly transported over a millennium into the future to the schoolhouse of Rabbi Akiva. He was overwrought with confusion at the conversation being held there. Eventually, Akiva's students asked him, Rabbi, where does this come to you from? Akiva responds, it's a tradition from Moses at Sinai. In these words, Moses' mind was set at ease. He turned to God and asked, Holy One, there's a person like this, and you're giving the Torah by my hand? God said to him, be silent. Thus it ascended in thought before me. But Moses wasn't sated with this answer and demanded, Master of the world, you showed me his Torah. Now show me his reward. He was suddenly shown Akiva's flesh being weighed on scales after he had been tortured to death by the Romans. Moses, in shock, said, Master of the world, this is Torah and this is its reward? God responded once again, be silent. Thus it ascended in thought before me. For teaching the Torah, he received through the generations from Moses, Akiva himself was publicly tortured and killed. God attempts to teach Moses to be silent in the face of such a tragedy. An acknowledgement of the human inability to fully understand God. Even as God puts it in this story, these ideas rose before God just as they were. God is in a sense passive. Moses in this encounter learns only to try to make sense of it. On the other hand, 
we see Aaron naturally reflect the lesson God tried to teach Moses. Silence in the face of unspeakable tragedy. We all know that no person ever has or ever will have a relationship to God akin to that of Moses. But Aaron and God, each of us embodies that relationship. The Torah tells us that we Jews are to be a nation of priests, to serve as the priestly people amongst the nations. Aaron, the first high priest, is the model for us, not only in his silence, but also in his eventual response. Later in the story, Moses chastises Aaron for having not eaten a portion of a sacrificial offering. Aaron, having been silent up until this moment, responds, See, this day Nadav and Abihu brought their sin offering and their burnt offering before God, and such things have befallen me. Had I eaten the sin offering today, God would not have approved. Moses acquiesces. Aaron not only took his time in silence to process the horror that he was confronted with, but he mindfully responded to it. Just before this exchange between Aaron and Moses, the Torah tells us that God had reached out directly and personally to Aaron, telling him, you must distinguish between the sacred and the profane and between the elevated and the mundane. In this story, Aaron does just this. Rather than lashing out or jumping to an immediate interpretation of what has happened, he discerns his feelings and his situation. He takes the time to distinguish his mood in relationship to his role. In this, he responds more effectively than Moses. We can learn from Aaron. When we experience unspeakable tragedy, we too can use the skill of silence to measure our response. When we see images of families crowded into pens at our nation's border, when we hear of another mass shooting at a school or a house of worship, when another climate change-induced natural disaster destroys lives, we can sit with the awful discomfort of simply experiencing our horror. In time, we can use that feeling to charge us to action rather than reflexively venting our outrage and being done with it. And then after taking that time to internalize and accept the reality of the situation, then we can properly act. We can properly respond. Are you holding on to a particular experience of this kind of tragedy that you are still sitting with? Or can you think back to one that you immediately vented about but now may wish to address? Have you had your moment of silence in the face of this kind of tragedy? And are you now ready to respond after discernment? If so, this community, Temple Emmanuel, is here to help you in your action. Please don't allow the feeling of overwhelm to keep you from ever responding or ever beginning to act. Let me know that you have this desire, and we can work together in community as a nation of priests to discern the sacred from the profane, to separate the mundane from the elevated, and to repair our world so that it matches the vision of our prophets of old. We can build it together, piece by piece.